Hi friends, today's lesson is how to make baked meatballs and spaghetti sauce. Um, the only ingredients you need for this is you need two slices of bread, it can be regular bread, it could be a hamburger bun, just one hamburger bun should be do, you know, should do you. Um, you need one pound of hamburger, you need salt, pepper, you need an onion, any size will do, preferably a white onion, you could use a yellow one if you're that uh, picky, yellow is fine. Yellow onions don't give you onion breath like the white ones do or the red ones. Uh, the yellow ones are kind of mild. Okay. You also need garlic powder. Notice that we said powder, not salt. You need garlic powder. You need oregano leaves. You need basil leaves. And you need onion powder. Also notice that I said powder. You don't want minced onions. You don't want onion salt. You want onion powder. And you also need a baking pan, preferably a large one, and, and you need three cans of peeled, whole peeled tomatoes. These are around, uh, my eyes so ain't very good, 28 ounce cans approximately, you need three of those. You can also do it with four cans if, if you like a lot of sauce for your spaghetti. But the recipe we're going to do today is basically enough for you to make enough for one pound of spaghetti or penny pasta, rigatoni, whatever else. You know, you can use any kind of pasta you want. You could use fettuccine, linguine, macaroni noodles, anything. But today we're not going to show you how to make the spaghetti or any of that stuff. This is strictly meatballs and sauce. Enough for one pound of any type of pasta that you want to cook. Or you could even just use this to make meatball sandwiches with or something like that if you wanted to do it that way. Either way you'll have meatballs and sauce when we get done with this recipe. Now you also need a blender for this recipe and you also need a cutting board or something and a sharp knife and by the way you take responsibility for any injuries that you do to yourself or others or any any type of illness or whatever that's all on you this is a use at your own risk if you burn yourself cut yourself cut your wife or husband or whatever, burn them or somebody dies or whatever, it's your fault, not mine. Thank you. That's your disclaimer. Okay, this is how we do it. Okay, this is your whole onion. You didn't have to use as big of an onion as I have here. Uh, you can use smaller ones. Any size onion will do. First thing I do is Cut the ends off of your onion. Cut off both ends. Do not cut yourself or your wife or your husband or whatever. Okay. Cut the ends off and put that aside. And then carefully just try to go through one layer. And then you can kind of just peel it off. You might get two layers, but that's fine. And then just discard that. And then you're left with the core of your onion. You want to take that. Get off there. Don't cut yourself. You want to cut one slice, two slice. I flip it over there. And then we cut this in half. Don't cut any fingers off or any of that stuff. If you do, it's your fault, not mine. I'm doing these two slices together. That's the way I like to do it. It's faster and easier. And just 
cut it into smaller pieces. Okay, then we take our baking pan or large baking pan and we just put all these onions on the bottom. And the reason why that we want to put the onions on the bottom is because they tend to cook better if they're on the bottom. Now when we make our meatballs we're going to kind of move the onions we may move them around and position the meatballs between the onions, but that don't matter too much, but we might just do it for luck's sake or something. Okay, now we're gonna make your we're gonna make your meatballs. And you wanna start out by putting about three dashes of salt. You don't have to put exact amount. Then one, two, three, four, five. I put about five dashes of black pepper in there. Okay, this is your garlic powder. One, I don't know, two good shakes of garlic powder should be enough. Oregano, about three dashes. Onion powder, you can go a little heavier on this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven dashes. Seven dashes of onion powder. Basil, two, three, about three dashes of basil. Okay. Okay, then take your two slices of bread and you want to very carefully without smashing it you want to kind of flake flake it into pieces into your bowl sometimes the pieces might be a little bigger you can go back and pick them up and flake them down a little more if it's not perfect hey this is homemade stuff dude but you just want to go through and do this until you get it all flaked up into smaller pieces okay then you want to take your pound of hamburger take a knife and just cut down through it without cutting yourself or others squeeze your hamburger into this Okay, and by the way, before you started all this, you were supposed to wash your hands. Uh, common sense would tell people they need to wash your hands before they do any cooking. Uh, if you forgot, that's alright, it's going to be cooked, so it'll probably burn up all those extra germs. Because, I mean, who knows where you put your hands. It's a good idea to wash them if you're cooking this food unless you're cooking it for yourself but if you poison yourself with germs it's your fault if you poison others with germs it's also your fault not mine you take all responsibility okay now you want to take all your stuff you made here your hamburger and all that and you want to mix it mix it as good as you can by hand or this is the point to where if you had one of those professional mixers you could have done this with your professional mixer they sell those at Walmart for about two hundred and fifty dollars there's also even other ones that you can use but that's basically what you do is you want to just keep mixing it until it's mixed really good you can do it however you want uh, it don't usually work if you're using a fork or any of that stuff it usually 
will not mix good enough to make your meatballs. But one of those professional mixers, which I really wish my wife would spring and get me one, are about 250 bucks. <laughs> Okay, you want to just keep mixing that until you try to get all them breadcrumbs all mixed into it smoothly, but nobody's perfect. It'll still taste good. Might have a little white puffer in there in the meatball, but hey, they taste great. Okay, you can make meatballs any size you want. You can get about, oh, I don't know, just a pinching about that big of your hamburger. And just kind of, you see how I, it's like playing like you're a kid or something. When you made them little balls with the Play-Doh, you can do that with your hamburger. And you can shape a ball, which is a meatball. And then just stick it in here in your pan. And oh, by the way, it would have been better if you had sprayed this pan with some kind of non-stick spray before you did all this. But obviously we're going to have to scrub a little harder because I forgot to put it in there. Just stick your meatball in there. And just keep making more meatballs with just a, you know, a fair little pinch of the hamburger stuff and just kind of shape it by rolling it around in your hand and it'll look like a meatball. Now you can make these any size you want. If you want larger meatballs, you can make larger meatballs, but cooking times would be longer than what I'm going to use if you wanted to make very large meatballs you would have to cook them for longer um, you don't want to eat undercooked beef because you don't know if the cow had mad cow disease or something like that so you want to make sure you cook for the proper amount of time and the recipe I'm giving is for just normal sized meatballs they're not big and they're not real teensy tiny they're just normal sized meatballs and you just keep doing that making these meatballs till you have enough to uh, to cook with you could make the meatballs a little smaller if you like mini meatballs that's fine too you could go smaller but these are about average normal size meatballs now you want to preheat your oven to about 425 degrees after you get done with these meatballs preheat your oven to 425 degrees after you get done making your meatballs you want to make sure you wash your hands filthy sucker okay then you want to take your cans of uh, whole peeled tomatoes all three of them and you want to go ahead and open them up take your your open cans of these uh, peeled tomatoes and you want to carefully drain them 
Now you could dump this in a cup and drink it. It's good tomato juice if you wanted to. But you don't have to. You can dump it in the sink or whatever. Drain them out without losing your tomatoes. That's the name of the game. And do that for all three cans. Good idea to keep your hands washed because you're freaking nasty, dude. Wash your hands. Okay, you want to come back here? You want to add these spices on top of your meatballs and your onions and that's basically so your sauce will be seasoned too. Take your garlic powder and just dump a little bit, a light covering over your meatballs and onions. Take your basil, do the same thing with that, just put a light covering over the whole thing. Your onion powder, you can put that in a little heavier. Put a heavy covering on your meatballs and onions. And then your oregano, you can put a light covering or even to a heavy covering over all your meatballs and your onions. Okay, now you want to take your, your peeled tomatoes that have been drained and dump them in the blender. You're probably not going to fit all three cans in your blender unless you get a giant blender. You're going to have to do two cans and then one can by itself. Go ahead and blend them. Don't matter what speed it's on. This one goes up to 14 and I've got it around 8. Okay, now you want to take your blended tomatoes and kind of slowly dump them into your baking dish. You want to try if you can to get everything kind of covered up like the meatballs you want a little bit of sauce to go over each of those. sure all your onions and your meatballs have got a covering over top of it at least when you pour it on there things will change when it's cooking okay you preheated your oven to 425 you want to go ahead and stick it in the oven carefully without burning yourself if you do it's your fault not mine for one hour. Bake at 425 for one hour. Okay friends, it's been one hour. We're going to take it out. Careful, what's hot. Okay, this is what it looks like after it came out of the oven. This is what it looks like when we bring it out of the oven. Here is a meatball. That's what your finished meatball looks like. We're going to cut it in half so you can see what it looks like inside. See? Fully done. Completely fully done. Be careful, we're kind of hot. Now that is a meatball. Okay friends, if you want to use this for your, your uh, spaghetti, you'll notice that there's a little bit of greases and stuff at the top of your sauce. And it's nice and conveniently located at the top of your sauce. You want to take a ladle or something and try to scoop at least a majority of the greases you see floating on the top unless you're somebody that's not worried about heart attacks and all that stuff then you could just leave it there but hey that's your fault if you die because you didn't 
kind of soak the grease that's floating at the top out. Take that and then dump this in your spaghetti or whatever you made and then uh, you can uh, dump it on your pasta, mix it up and eat it. Don't burn yourself because if you do it's your fault. See we dumped our sauce and our meatballs right here in with our spaghetti. Now we're going to mix it up and you can mix it up with whatever kind of pasta you like. Spaghetti is a great choice. One of my most favorites in the world. Spaghetti. Actually it is my favorite. What am I talking about? Delicious. Just stir it up really good and you'll have some good old spaghetti and meatballs. Nothing like it. Yeah baby. Spaghetti and meatballs. Delicious. Nothing like spaghetti and meatballs.